Hi, I'm Dr. Malescu, and I'm here to teach you about the body cavities and the organs, specifically on the human torso model. We're going to go over all of these uh, organs located in the abdominal pelvic cavity, cranial cavity, which houses the brain. We're going to go over all of that on this video, and I will be turning the camera around now to show you the human torso models that we have here in the lab. Um, we're going to go over where the adrenal gland is, where the aorta is. This is the main artery uh, leaving the left side of the heart, carrying oxygenated blood throughout the rest of the body. All its branches um, coming off to various organs and um, other structures. So we will identify the aorta on the human torso model, the brain, the diaphragm, which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. It's a muscle that goes down as you inhale and expand the lungs. So we're going to go over that when we do AMP2 respiratory system. Esophagus, it is the main pipeline that uh, will allow the food to enter the stomach. So we're going to identify where that is in a human torso model today. All of this will be on your practical, so we need to go over every single organ on this list to make sure that we know where it is located. The functions will be at a later date. This is your first day of lab, so we're just kind of getting a superficial idea of where all the organs are and the organ systems. The next thing we will uh, identify is the heart, located in the pericardial cavity within the thoracic cavity itself, which subdivides, as you know, in the pericardial cavity, the right pleural cavity, which holds the right lung, the left pleural cavity, which holds the left lung. We'll go over that. Um, inferior vena cava, I like to call it 95 north. Basically, it's all the deoxygenated blood coming from the lower extremity, pelvis, everything from the waist below. All the oxygen that's deoxygenated is coming back to the right side of the heart via this particular vein. Very large vein. It runs parallel to the aorta and quite deep, and we will identify that on the human torso model. The next one will be the kidneys. You'll notice that the adrenal glands will be sitting on top of the kidneys. We're going to go over that. We're going to be able to identify uh, and make distinguished um, identifications between the small and the large intestine. The structures look quite different, so we'll go over that on the human torso model. We will identify where the liver is uh, below the diaphragm in the uh, superior portion of that abdominal cavity. Um, the lungs are located in the thoracic cavity within its own cavities, left and right pleural cavities, and we're going to go over that where that is. The pancreas is retroperitoneal behind all the abdominal contents and um, also behind the um, lining that covers the abdominal contents, which is the parietal peritoneum. All right, moving on. We already talked about the small intestine. The spinal cord will be located in that dorsal cavity. We'll identify where that is. The spinal cord and the brain is part of the central nervous system. So we'll make sure that we are able to identify it and we will have a two weeks worth of nervous system uh, towards the end of the semester. Uh, next is the spleen. The spleen is hard to identify on the human model, so make sure that you are able to identify the spleen. Superior vena cava. This is deoxygenated blood coming from the head, neck, and superior limb, draining into the right side of the heart. The stomach. All right, so we need to identify the stomach, which is in a whole epigastric area, if you learned your body regions from a previous video. Um, the next thing is the thyroid gland, which is right below the larynx, and it's located in that neck area anteriorly. We're going to go over that so you can identify it on the human torso model. The trachea will have circular rings, quite easy to identify, and in the human torso model, it has a blue color. So it has a definite color that's different um, than the rest of the human torso model. And then finally on this list is the ureters. The ureters, their only mission in life is to transport urine that's made in the kidney, transport it to the urinary bladder. From the urinary bladder, it goes out the urethra and into the toilet. So we will identify where the ureters are. It's quite deep in the human torso model. 
All right, so without further ado, I'm going to turn the camera and you will see the two human torso models. And we're gonna start reviewing the human torso models. So the first thing I want to identify right here, I'm gonna bring it really nice and close so you can see, is the adrenal gland. So the adrenal gland is located on top of the kidney. So this is the kidney and this is the adrenal gland. I had a laser pointer and it didn't seem to work, so hopefully this helps on the video a little bit better. So I'm gonna go from the top. This is the adrenal gland. It sits on top of the kidneys. All right, next is the aorta, 95 south, bringing oxygenated blood from the heart. So if we place the heart like this, right here, apex is facing distal and lateral. So if this is the mid-sagittal, I'm just reviewing from the previous video, the apex of the heart is facing distal and lateral. So that's your heart. This is the diaphragm right here. Okay, we take the heart out. This is your pericardial cavity. And you can see this is the aorta. It runs in a curve like this up superiorly and then deep and running inferiorly down the abdominal cavity all the way down to the pelvis. All right, so this is 95 south. Look at all the branches. And so um, aorta is going to carry oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart. So you can see the aortic arch here. And as it arches, it curves downward, posteriorly, and deep all the way down, descending down this human torso model, and splitting up, which we'll learn later in AMP2, into other tributaries. So that's your aorta. The next thing I'm gonna go over is the brain. So take a look, I'm gonna turn it around. And here you can see Hopefully you can see the brain within the cranial cavity. And remember, we divided the body into anterior and posterior. So everything here is anterior. I'm just reviewing from the last video. And everything here is posterior. A synonym equivalent to that same medical terminology is what? Ventral, remember this? And then this is dorsal. So we use these terms interchangeably uh, in anatomy as well as in medical terminology, okay? So obviously if we ask you a question about where this uh, cranial cavity is in the brain, this is all posterior. And what else is posterior? If we turn around, posteriorly we can view the spinal cord. So if I put a sticker on here for a lab practical and I ask you to identify where the spinal cord is, it is right here. The spinal nerves Spinal nerve roots, I should say, in pairs, come off of the spinal cord. And so you will learn once we get to a uh, nervous system that there are eight cervical pairs of cervical spinal nerves. There are 12 pairs of thoracic nerves, five pairs of lumbar, and of course the sacral. So you don't have to know this for um, this particular practical but at the end of the course you will so all I want you to know for the purposes of this video is to be able to identify the spinal cord and to have an idea that the spinal nerves come off of the spinal cord okay so what else um, to review on that list that we just went over um, in your handout for your practical is the ability to identify the diaphragm the diaphragm is extremely important to identify. This is it right here, okay? It is a division. It separates the thoracic from the abdominal pelvic. And the thoracic further subdivides in the right pleural cavity housing the right lung, that there's your lung, and the left pleural cavity housing the left lung, and then you've got your heart housed in the pericardial cavity. So what about, you saw the term mediastinum, and we talked about it in the previous video. The mediastinum, M for middle, everything that's posterior or deep to the heart, behind it, retro, you know, that is where the mediastinum is. It's just the space we delineate and all the structures around it. Okay, so what are some of the structures? On that list, you can see that we talk about the esophagus. So let's go over that. This is your diaphragm. 
the esophagus actually pierces through the diaphragm right here. You can see it. I'm not sure if you can see it real close, so I'm going to bring it closer to you. The dome-shaped muscle is called a diaphragm. And if I tilt it over just like that, take a look, and you can see right in here, that right there is your esophagus piercing through. And if I ask you on a practical, this right here is your esophagus. It's got that fleshy colored uh, tubular structure. All right, so next on the list, um, as you know, you're supposed to be able to identify the heart. You're going to see the heart with the apex facing distal and what? Lateral towards that left arm. So if we look at this other torso, human torso model, you will see that the heart is hiding in here and the apex is facing distal and lateral. Okay, so there's the left lung and you can see the apex. All right, and here you can see the diaphragm. All right. So I've already taken this human torso model apart for examination, so I'm going to leave that one intact. All right, next on the list is inferior vena cava. So the inferior vena cava is located right here. So what did I tell you about the inferior vena cava? It's blue. Why is it colored blue here? That's not going to be the case in reality. Um, when you're performing surgery, um, the color of a vein versus an artery an artery is definitely more pink and red and it's pumping. You see pulsatile movement. Um, the vein will be slightly more grayish, but for the purposes of learning the human torso model, it is quite blue and you can see that that systemic circulation identifies deoxygenated blood coming from the lower extremity. So that is the purpose of the inferior vena cava. Um, again, for the purposes of this first practical, I just need you to be able to identify where it is located. So this is the inferior vena cava, okay? Now, if there's an inferior vena cava, there's a superior vena cava, and you can see it right here. The superior vena cava comes into that right side of the heart right here, okay? And you can see it right there, all right? And basically, it's deoxygenated blood coming from the superior limb, right and left arm, the neck, see, you could see it coming in, and also from the head. So all the blood that is draining back to the right side of the heart with deoxygenated blood, which is eventually going to go to the lungs via the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries, which you'll learn later when we do a and 2 So again, all I want you to know for this practical is to be able to identify all the organs on the human torso model, and you have the handout, you have this video, this should help you a lot. Okay, so we carry on to the next identification. Uh, kidneys, we already went over, so let me just double check, make sure you saw it. Here's the kidneys, and in comparison to the adrenal glands, the kidneys are much larger, and you can see we went over the adrenal glands uh, at the beginning of this video. It sits right on top of the kidneys. All right, now we carry on to um, the large intestine and the small intestine. So um, I'm going to move this aside and you can see the difference between the large intestine and small intestine. Um, basically, and let me grab another uh, portion of the human torso model that was disarticulated. You can see that the large intestine is a darker color than the small intestine, so that helps you, but please don't go by color on these human models. But also, um, I would rather encourage you to look at the differences in structure. Um, the large intestine has these large pockets called halstrom, which we'll learn later in AMP2, and this long line called the tinea coli. All right, and then look at the small intestine, how nicely packed it is. And that's how it sits in the abdominal cavity as you can see here. And lying on top is this connective tissue which also holds fat and vasculature. That is called the greater omentum. All right, now, after the large intestine on that list is the liver. So you can see the liver is pretty high up just below that diaphragm. So if we're going back to reviewing the quadrants and the regions, 
In terms of the quadrant, it's the right upper quadrant reaching all the way out to that epigastric region. Okay, so it's right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, you're still gonna have that liver. It's rather large, and right beneath that is your stomach. All right, um, now you're probably gonna ask me where is the pancreas? So the pancreas is closely associated with the first portion of the small intestine. And you can see that first portion of the small intestine is the duodenum, which we're gonna learn in AMP too. But if we ask you on the, the first practical where the pancreas is, it's going to be associated, it's going to be associated with the small intestine and large intestine as you can see. And it's got this um, shape here, looks like a little tail. So the pancreas is quite special um, because it acts as both an endocrine as well as an exocrine uh, gland. So as an exocrine gland, we'll talk about it in the digestive system, as an endocrine gland it releases hormones. So it's one of the few only glands in the body that acts as both exocrine and endocrine. Do you need to know that now? No, you don't need to know that now. You need to know it for AMP2. However, you do need to know where it's located. So be sure to study the models when you come to lab. All right, moving on from the pancreas, um, I, I already identified the small intestine and the large intestine. I already identified the spinal cord on that list. I identified the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The only few things left on that list is stomach. So this is your stomach. As you can see, it, it's really deep and it lays inferior to the liver. So in this disarticulated portion of the human torso, I'm going to show you what the stomach looks like. So this is what the stomach looks like. For now, you don't need to know the part.